Show, show versus, versus tell, tell penalty, penalty on Grand, Grand Admiral, Admiral Thrawn. Loss, Loss of audience, audience understanding of the actual, actual threat. threat. Rewrite, Rewrite needed, needed with additional scenes for showing. showing. Hi, I'm the writing ref, where I don't hate, I just officiate your favorite Star Wars. That's right, I had to call a penalty on Grand Admiral Thrawn, and I know a lot of you are going, what? He was perfect. Well, he was perfect, and Lars Mikkelsen plays him perfectly. Four people who know who he is. A lot of people might be old book fans from the 90s and know who Thrawn is, and agree that they captured him perfectly. But there's a group of Star Wars fans who've never read any books or watched any of the animated shows. And for them, Thrawn was built up to be much more than he ended up being. Shout out to my friend Shane Tuck and Amy Tuck to pointing this out to me. We had an amazing season of live action Star Wars in Ahsoka. But the telling penalty against Thrawn is indicative of some of the choices of telling versus showing in Ahsoka that plagued the whole show. And I'm going to talk about how to fix what was told about Thrawn and not shown right now. Somehow Palpatine returned. Rebellion tell me to protect them. What if they get sick? While Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet and the Iron Forces. Grand Admiral Thrawn was first introduced in the pages of Heir to the Empire, a book written by one of my favorite authors, Timothy Zahn. The book came out in 1991, and in that first chapter, we meet Thrawn sitting in his meditation chamber, surrounded by art. He's the third character we meet in the book, and the most prominent, as he uses art and explains it to Captain Pelion as to how he's going to manage his next attack. Put a pin on that. Fast forward to 2020, where Thrawn has already appeared as a main antagonist on the Star Wars show Rebels, but his first live-action mention comes in the episode The Jedi of Mandalorian Season 2. Now tell me, where is your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? And then he's mentioned again at the end of Mandalorian Season 3 during the Shadow Council by none other than Captain Pelion himself. Grand Admiral Thrawn's return will herald in the re-emergence of our military. Yet I see, once again, that Grand Admiral Thrawn is missing from your delegation. Any word on when he will be able to participate in the Shadow Council? After that, we got this amazing show, Ahsoka, in which the first five episodes Thrawn is talked about and talked about the location of the last missing Imperial Grand Admiral. Thrawn. And talked about. Thrawn calls to me. Across time and space. You get the point. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, I want to mention something. The head of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, has been notorious for dismissing comic book and book characters as part of Star Wars lore that they could draw from. During a press tour for The Rise of Skywalker, she infamously told Rolling Stone, There's no source material. We don't have comic books. We don't have 800-page novels. She's talking about like Game of Thrones. We don't have anything other than passionate storytellers who get together and talk about what the next iteration might be. Now, why do I bring this up? Thrawn's a big deal. For a long time, he represented the entire sequel trilogy for a generation of Star Wars fans. He was all we had, and to see him back, even though he was in Rebels at the time Kennedy made that statement, means that there was a shift in thinking after the rise of Skywalker and its lackluster success of maybe we should be pulling from source material. So they started to do that. But now there may be a little bit too much assumption, the way this is written, that people know who Thrawn is. How should he have been introduced in Ahsoka? So I mentioned earlier how Thrawn's very first introduction is in a meditation chamber with art. And that's at the core of his character, how he studies cultures and people in order to come up with interesting solutions for victory and make his enemy predictable. 
But you can't really start that way with Thrawn at this point. So what you have to do is use the characters you have talking about them. The things that were said about Thrawn were effective, but they were almost too effective, making Thrawn seem like he was a, another Vader or Force user who was going to annihilate the galaxy with more Death Stars. But he's not that kind of leader. Even if he won, the, the Empire would be a very different Empire than it would be under Palpatine, for example. In fact, Palpatine would have resurged considering Thrawn a threat to him. However, you still have to make people understand the threat level Thrawn actually poses. And to do that, you can't just have everyone be like, Oh no, Thrawn's coming. You have to show what he's capable of. And the way to do that would have been by revisiting one of his battles. Now by revisiting battles, I don't mean doing a flashback sequence. Although that would have been an effective way to show what Thrawn is about. I'm talking about a holo projection type battle in this Senate meeting right here. The argument should have been with uh, Senator McDoucheface over here that yes, the Empire has been a problem. What of the what about uh, Grand Moff Gideon on Mandalore? But they're splintered. They'll never reunite. And the argument, the real danger of Thrawn is reuniting the Imperial forces under competent leadership. That guy could be like incredulous. Ugh, even if he's competent, we'd never allow it. And then someone shows a pro like Hera, a projection of a battle that he wins with only two star destroyers versus an entire fleet or something. And you have it be kind of a crafty enough holographic display that it's entertaining enough to the audience as well as informative to the senators. So if everyone understands what the threat level for Thrawn is, by the time we get to Peridia, we understand totally that whatever Balin is after is a much more potent threat to the galaxy at large, or even all of Star Wars. And I think we get that idea in general, but they didn't want to pull the trigger fully. And we'll talk about the big threat and how they handled that in the next video. For now, Riding Rough out.